Good evening. Uh, I'm Miss Scott. I was the art teacher at PS312 for 23 years. Uh, before I was the art teacher, I was an illustrator. And since I retired last June, I've been working on my artwork. I'm getting back into my illustration and that's how I've been keeping busy during the pandemic. And uh, it keeps me out of trouble. So I'm just gonna share with you uh, an illustration that I did recently. And I'm gonna show it to you. Uh, the name of this illustration is, Am I Ready to Travel? And so the woman is testing the waters. She's dipping her foot in the pool. And on the pool, I drew different symbols of travel. So I'm happy and thankful for the Parents Association for asking me to teach this lesson. And I'm also especially glad that the Parents Association, I, I had sent five paintings and they chose the eclipse by Alma Thomas. And from the hand the handout that was sent to you, uh, maybe you read that Alma Thomas was an art teacher in Washington, DC for 35 years. And then when she retired, she became a painter and had a lot of success. So I kind of like that connection with the artist that we're working on today. So now we're gonna go to the setup and I'll speak to you about how you're gonna uh, place everything and set up in preparation for this activity. I'm all set up. I have my canvas. You don't, you could have your canvas laying flat. I only have it up uh, so I could demonstrate to you. I have my paper plate for my palette. This is where I'm gonna mix colors. You could use aluminum foil. And when you're done with it, you just throw it out. But have some extra paper plates uh, just in case. I also have some objects that I will use to trace circles. On my handout, I, I wrote that you could do it freehand or you could use objects to trace. Uh, I have my sponge or you could use a paper towel to absorb extra water. Uh, pencils, the brushes that you received from the school and an eraser. And we have for the acrylic paint, the three primaries, black and white. If you have the three primaries, red, yellow, blue, black and white, you could mix any color that exists. Uh, colors mixed with white are called tints and colors mixed with black are called shades. I'm gonna set up my palette now where I'm gonna squeeze some paint onto the paper plate or uh, aluminum foil. You should have, the light colors are weaker and the dark colors are stronger. So you'll probably need a lot more white, uh, a lot of yellow, That one's all out. A lot of yellow. You know, a medium amount of uh, red and, well, blue is dark. You, you might need a little less at a time. And when we use black, you're only gonna use a small amount at a time because it's very strong. We're gonna sketch the outline for the painting. 
Now I have a tear sheet from a teacher's magazine of the artwork, but you could, it's optional, you could project the image of the eclipse on another device if you have one. So I'm going to start off, I believe in this eclipse, I think this is a solar eclipse and the moon is blocking part of the view of the sun. So we're going to start by drawing the moon or the shadow of the moon. And I'm going to use a three ounce Dixie cup to sketch it. And I see that it's closer to the top and closer to the right side. And I'm going to trace the cup. Some of these circles I'm going to trace and some of them I'm just going to do freehand. It's up to you. The next size that I have is uh, this little glass thing, little glass bowl. Hold it in place and trace it. I have this uh, pint size Chinese food container. And I try to center each circle around the circle that's inside. And the next size I have is a medium sized paper plate and it goes off the edge. It's hard to see if I'm centered. I didn't like the way that came out. So I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to do it freehand. You don't have to worry about the lines because we're using opaque paint. That means that you can't see through it. Transparent means you could see through. And opaque means you can't. So I didn't like the way that looked. So I'm going to do the rest freehand. Now, I don't expect your painting to look exactly like Miss Tom, like Miss Thomas's painting. But you're going to get practice. I think the main point of this lesson is you're going to learn about mixing colors becoming aware that there are so many different types of red, so many different types of blue and yellow. And now I'm going to draw some rows in between. Again, your canvas will be flat it'll be easier to work with than standing up like this. Alma Thomas was very inspired by nature. And uh, this is an artwork that she did. And these represent different types of flowers. And her artwork is very recognizable by these brush strokes with some white space in between. All right, don't 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 worry about you know having the exact number of rings. You know, we're here to have fun tonight. Okay, so we're going to start off by um trying to mix this color blue. And this is not the same blue as this. I see a little black in that blue. 
and I see a little bit of white. So uh, I'm gonna take my medium sized brush. I'm gonna take a bunch of blue. I'm gonna wash. I'm gonna wash and dry. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of black, uh, white, I'm sorry, white. And, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of black because it's definitely not the same blue. I wanna make it a little grayer looking. Now you're not always gonna get the right color on the first try, sometimes you have to play with it quite a few times. Uh, feel free to stop this video, to catch up on the task we just did, and then start it again. I'm going to take a little black, only a little at a time. Uh, now I see it's, it's not dark enough. I'm going to take a little, a little more black. So it looks sort of like a grayish blue. Now, when you're mixing your colors, I know from past experience, kids like to mix and then spread it all over the whole plate. Don't do that. Try to keep your circles relatively small so you have room on your plate for other colors. Otherwise, you're gonna go through a million plates. Um, I would add hmm, a little more black, a little more blue, and a little more black. Oh yeah, that's making it, that looks more similar. So remember, don't spread too much. Okay, I'm gonna take my pointy brush and I'm gonna outline the circle. and I'm gonna color it in. You could use the medium sized brush to fill it all in. Well, that's not bad. Okay, so you're gonna wash and dry in between each color. So my next row, I see a lighter blue. So I'm going to start all over. Uh, I'm going to grab some white, some blue, I'm sorry, some blue. And I'm going to get a, a good amount of white. Hmm. It's looking too cool for me. I may add a drop of yellow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a drop of yellow and I think I need more blue. I think it's a little light. So remember, you gotta keep experimenting till it's closer to what you want. Oh, I think that's pretty similar. Maybe I'm gonna wash. 
Oh, here, I have a little blue on this brush. I'm going to mix a little bit of this blue in to make it darker. Try not to spread too much. Okay. I'm going to take my thinner brush, my pointy brush, and I'm going to make skinny brush strokes that go all around. And I'm going to leave a white space between the big circle and a white space between each brush stroke. Make sure it's pointy. If you have a blob of paint at the end, uh, wipe it off on the paper plate or whatever you're using for your palette. Okay. So now I'm gonna wash and dry. And my next color is interesting. It looks like, to me, a grayish green. So first we're gonna make green. So I'm starting, we, we're gonna repeat this blue on the third row, but right now we're gonna make that grayish green. So I'm gonna make a green I'm gonna take a lot of yellow because remember the, the lighter colors are not as strong. All right, so we're, we're getting a dark green here. Okay, wash. dry. I'm going to take a bunch of white. So this sort of looks like a mint green, but it doesn't look gray enough. So I have a light green here, cool green, but it doesn't look gray. So I'm going to wash dry, and I'm going to take some black. Remember, not a lot. See, not a lot. Hmm. Not quite there. I think this is still too green. I'm going to add more blue. It's a bluish, greenish, grayish. But you're definitely getting practice looking at colors, identifying them, and trying to create them. I'm gonna make it a little lighter. We're getting there. A little more white. Oh, that's pretty good now. Also, if you if you look up a painting on the internet and you see 50 photos of a painting, the color will be different in each one. So you you don't know exactly what the true colors are. All right, I still think it needs a little blue. Um I I prepared for this lesson, I practice with my son, his wife, and his friend, and we did the painting in an hour and a half with me teaching it and us all doing the painting, 
So you could use that as a guideline that it's going to be an hour and a half, give or take a half hour or an hour. So you're at home. You could take your time. So I see the row of grayish green. It's very skinny. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the point of my brush and I'm going to draw skinny, skinnier. Use the point and don't press as hard. And remember, we're going to use this color again for the fourth row. Uh, I want to thank my son here. He's my, uh, my cinematographer. And he's my technology person. Because that's not my strength. So he's here filming me. My son's a math teacher, high school math teacher in New Jersey. Okay, there it is, the greenish gray. I'm gonna go back to that first color, that blue. And this time I'm gonna use my medium sized brush. This is, uh, hmm, no, I think I'm gonna use my skinny brush. But I'm gonna I'm gonna press down to try to get a wider brush stroke. See, I'm pressing down so it's fatter. Don't worry if. Uh, your brush strokes don't match up the pencil lines. We're, 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 we're trying just to create her style and the spontaneity that means that it's done pretty quickly and, and she didn't spend a lot, you know, she didn't overwork it. It's done pretty quickly. So don't worry if it's not exact. Okay, now we're going to go back to that gray line. Wash, dry. And the gray line is wider, so I'm going to use my medium brush. You, you were given three brushes. Actually, mine is a little too wide, so I'm going to use the side of it. Oh, I made a mistake. I dipped in the wrong color. Okay, and then I see one more row of the original blue. After that, we're going to mix a new color. So I'm going to use my medium brush, and I'm drawing this row. And again, uh, this is kind of wide, so I'm going to hold it on the side. Now make sure you make enough of a color because you may have to um, you may have to use it more than once, such as this blue. I know the first time I did this lesson, I was running out and I had to try to recreate the same color.
I'm running out a little now. Oh no. Okay, for the next row, I see this light blue and I see that it was only used once. That's interesting why she decided that. So I'm washing, I'm drying in between colors. And uh, I have a little room on my plate here. I'm gonna take just some blue, wash, dry. Make sure you have a container of water that's not gonna tip over. I would not use a paper cup. A, a, a glass jaw would be pretty good. I, I doubled up my plastic containers. Now I'm gonna take a lot of white. This is the lightest blue in the painting. Oh, pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna take my skinny brush because this is a skinny row of light blue. And I'm gonna make a skinny row. And as you could see, the uh, circles are beginning to go off the edge. Uh, I did pretty well, see how uh, the exact row is hitting the edge. But if it isn't, don't worry about it. You're getting a good experience handling brushes, washing and cleaning, cleaning them, be, becoming aware of different types of blues. There's a million blues, there's a million red, reds. There are like so many variations depending on how much and which colors you mix into it. Okay, so now we have two rows of purple. And I don't have any more room on my plate. I'm gonna take a new plate, but I'm gonna keep my, not waste my paint. And I'm gonna make purple. To make purple, if I saw you in person, I would ask you, but I'll just have to tell you. So purple is made with um, blue and red. I'm gonna start off by taking an, an equal amount, approximately equal amount. Let me take a little more because I'm doing two rows. Wash. dry. I'm drying on my brush, on my sponge, I mean, and I'm taking an equal amount of red. And let's see what this looks like. We may have to play with it a while. Hmm. I may add a drop it's pretty close. I'm going to add a drop more of blue. Okay. I hope I have enough. I think I'm going to have to make more for the two rows. All right. So again, I'm taking a bunch of blue, wash. Some red, equal amount. Now, you wanna keep your water clean. So at any point during the lesson, you could stop the video and change your water because the dirty water could affect your colors. Okay, that's, that's pretty close. So I see two skinny rows. So I'm gonna use my skinny brush wash, 
dry, get in that habit. And I'm gonna make two skinny rows of purple. I see that I didn't dry it enough. It's, it's watery, we don't, we don't want watery. That's for watercolors. This is acrylic paint. So most of the time it is not used thin. Uh, it's looking a little dark. I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white in there. I'm grabbing a little bit of white may make it look a little bit more purple, may make it clearer. That it's purple. Try to get that point on your brush, get rid of those blobs. I'm thinking for my second row of purple, this is looking kind of bluish purple. I think I want to add a little more red. Uh, Alma Thomas's two rows of purple don't look exactly the same color wise. So this is a blue purple and I'm going to add red to my purple. See, she has some variations. I see here it's lighter, there's more red, there's more white. On top, it's a darker purple. Sorry about, sorry about my head and my shoulders. I'm adding more um, red. Getting a point. Hopefully this will look slightly different. Not so much. I'm gonna add more red. Yeah, more of a reddish purple. Get that point back. Don't paint with that big fat blob at the end. Uh, that looks more reddish. Now this would be a good time to change your water because we're going to start working uh, in the orange, orange and yellow family and uh, we don't want any blue to get into our colors. So I'm going to take a break now to change my water. Uh, I got clean water right now. We had our little break. Also, uh, it was a good time for you to clean your brushes. You don't want any blue paint on your brushes because if you mix it with the red and the yellow, if you mix blue into it, you can end up with brown and there is no brown on this painting. The next row is a wide row and it looks like uh, a salmon color. The salmon color is orange with white mixed in. But first we have to make orange. Orange is uh, red and yellow. Uh, I'm gonna take my medium brush. No, I'll, I'll take the wide brush. We'll use the wide brush for this row. You want to try to vary the widths of your brush strokes. 
You want to have some skinny brush strokes, medium brush strokes, and wider or fatter brush strokes. The variety adds interest to the painting. So keep that in mind. I'm going to take a lot of yellow. Oh, you should make a lot of this color because there are four rows. We may not do four whole rows, but you don't want to run out of paint. I, I just dip my hand in the blue. I'm going to take more yellow. Ooh, I took a lot. Maybe that's too much. I'll put some on the side here. I'm going to wash my brush. Take some work to get the color off your brush. I'm going to cheat a little and use my paper towel to help me get some yellow off. I'm not going to use as much red because remember, the dark colors are much stronger than the lighter colors. So I want to make a medium orange. See how I used more yellow and less red? I'm going to take this. I'm just going to take another brush and uh, add some little darker. Mix it. It's much easier to make a color darker and add a little bit of the dark color than to try to lighten the color. When you try to lighten the color, you can end up using a lot more paint. Uh, wash, dry, and now I'm going to take some white to turn it into a salmon color or melon color. Oh, so this is way too yellow. I need more red. So I'm only going to add a little bit of red at a time. Try not to spread it so wide. I see I'm already beginning to get, take up a lot of room. I might have to get another plate soon. Still too yellow. So keep in mind, you don't get it right away. You gotta play with it. I'm adding some red. And I think I need more white to get that salmon or melon color. Well, now we're getting closer. Uh, it still needs more red and it still needs more white. So take your time and stop the video if you if you're falling behind, more white and a little more red. Oh, I'm still Still not doing it for me. I'm gonna take more red. And more white. It's still looking too orange. And 
and I still need more red, so I underestimated the amount of red. Because later on, we're going to use oranges without the white. Okay. Okay, now, now, uh, now we're getting there. Okay, this is the widest brush stroke in the painting. So I'm gonna use my fat brush, my fattest brush. I'm washing, I think that's a number 12. That's your number 12 brush. It really should be a little darker, but I don't wanna bore you, so. So now I'm gonna do a wide row of this melon or apricot or salmon color. Peach looks like. For my next row, I'm going to use the same color, but there's two very, very skinny rows, so I'm going to use the point of the skinny brush. Remember, get that point back, get rid of the blobs, and I'm going to do skinny rows. And if you make a mistake, you could all, the, the beauty of oil or acrylic paint is that if you make a mistake, you could just cover it up when it dries. When you're using watercolors, watercolors are transparent, so it's not so easy to fix a mistake. But you could always paint over your mistakes with acrylic or oil paint. So I like the contrast between the fat brush, the fat brush strokes and the skinny brush strokes. Try not to dip your hand in the paint like I did. Yeah, I'll just finish this fat row up. Okay. Uh I'm Let's see, I'll do one more row. There are three, but I'm running out of room, so I'm only gonna do two rows of this. So I did skip a couple of rows, so I give you permission to do that. Okay, now I see a row that's the closest to pure red. It's a red, but it has some white in it. So I'm starting from scratch. I'm not going to add to this color. That would, that would take too long. So I'm going to take some white. I'm sorry, red. And white. Lighten it up a little. And this is the brightest uh, red color in the painting. And I'm gonna make one row. And she used the skinny brush for this. 
or skinny brush stroke. So that color really stands out. Okay, so that's that's a pretty bright color. My next color looks like a regular orange with there's no white in it. It looks like it's yellow and, and red. So I'm gonna take some red. Oh, and there's a few rows, so I'll, I'll take more paint. Red. I'm gonna take a lot of yellow. Oops. See, see how dark it came out. So I had to use a lot more yellow. That's a good example of when the red is too strong. It's always easy to darken a color than to lighten a color. I'm gonna add a lot more yellow into this. I mixed uh, medium orange, and uh, Alma Thomas used her skinny brush, and there are three rows of medium orange. Uh, I ran out of room on the top, so I'm going to continue where I can on the top. And notice how this melon color is different than this... Uh, orange because there's white mixed in and also there's more red there's no white in this medium orange color make sure you have enough of this medium orange color because there are three rows If you need to add more paint to your palette, do that as you go along. Make sure you have your point of your brush. Wipe, wipe the brush on the plate so there isn't excess paint and you, you don't want that blob. I'm running out of room on the side and the top, so I think I'm only going to paint two rows of this medium orange. And the next color I see is a very light orange. It's, it's like a dark yellow or a light orange. So I, I was running out of um, yellow paint, so I refilled. So for this color, I'm going to take a lot of yellow, a lot of yellow. And I could either take a little red or maybe I'm going to use this orange. I'm going to take a little bit of this orange and mix it into the yellow. I don't want it to look like pure yellow. I want it to be a little more orange. So I'm gonna add a little more orange. Oh, that might be too dark. Let's see. Hmm. sort of like a marigold color. I'm going to add a little more yellow. 
so I want it to be a light orange. You know what? I'm also going to add a little white. I think there's my white mixed into that yellowy orange. Let's take some white, mix it in. And we're making a tint. A tint, again, is a color mixed with white. That's pretty good. So I'm going to use my medium brush. It's a wider brush stroke for the first one. I'm going to use my medium brush and make a wider. I'm noticing uh, my lines are a little dark. I'm going to lighten them up so they don't show through so much. wipe the, uh, the pieces of eraser off. We don't want those. Okay, so I'm using my medium brush and I'm making a medium brush stroke of that like gold color. And the next few brush strokes are the same color, but they're skinnier. So I'm going to use my pointy brush, wipe it, and I'm going to draw, draw a few, a paint, I'm sorry, paint a few rows of that very light orange. The painting finishes off, to me, it looks like a pure yellow. Uh, so yeah, I, I see three rows of this, three skinny rows. So don't worry about following the lines. You're here for the experience to, to master mixing colors, using your brush. All right, so we're gonna finish off the painting. Oh, I forgot up here. There was some rows, some skinny rows. Okay, wash, dry. using pure yellow. If it gets too thick, you may need some water to add to thin it out. And then you're gonna finish off the painting with the pure yellow. There are quite a lot of rows of the pure yellow. So it's a subtle difference, the yellow and the light orange. Keep following the curve. And go all the way to the corner. So 
So I'm finishing up the painting. I'm going to the corner. And I'm done. The eclipse. This scops the eclipse. So I hope you enjoyed PS312's first painting night. Uh, you now have the acrylic paint and the brushes, and you could do more paintings and work on them over the summer. You don't necessarily have to have a canvas. You could uh, paint on regular paper. I just wouldn't use thin paper. I wouldn't use copy paper, something a little thicker. And I want to thank uh, Miss Yu. I want to thank the Parents Association and my son, Evan Levy, for being my cameraman and coaching me. And I hope you had a lot of fun. Happy painting.